That's probably the most unbelievable experience um, that I can remember. The story that I remember is about the money that Ed was going over it with Jack and he was telling him there was three performances for I think 15,000 or something like that. And Ed was really upset and he said, it's not the money, Jack, it's who wants to see them three times. They're a flash in the pan, they're hot now, but you know, we have to play off that last, pay him off of that last show and never gonna air it well. Not only did they sustain, it got bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, so by the time they finally came over, it was like the block between Broadway and 8th. It was wall-to-wall -wall people, just like I'd seen pictures of when Frank Sinatra was at the Paramount and that whole block, and by the way, it was filled with people, filled with people, couldn't get through. And um, before we could actually rehearse, Bob said, let's get the cameraman and the reporters out of here, so we'll give them a half hour. So there's pictures of, I think there's a wall of cameramen, uh, you know, shooting just on top of each other, shooting the Beatles and and getting little sound bites uh, for about half an hour before they went out the door and we could rehearse. But they came in very polite, rehearsed, performed live. There was no demands like today. You know, we need this in a green room. We we, hadn't, we didn't have a green room. We had these grubby rehearsal, I mean, just grubby. Um, uh, rooms up, up this stairway in this old theater and uh, they were lucky to have a dressing room and uh, just very polite and just very nice and um, everything went fine until air and on air in those days they had these little like plastic headsets the cameraman everybody had these little this little headsets about this big and it was fine until the Beatles and on air the Beatles I mean, the, the audience was so crazed that the cameramen could not hear anything from the booth. They couldn't hear a thing. They would just, and eventually that led to redesigning headsets where they were big cushiony things, especially for music rock acts. That's how they, they changed. But the way it works at CBS, um, and it's different at NBC, is there's the director and the associate director, and really a switcher. At NBC, it's a director and the associate director, but the tractional director actually talks to the cameras. And unless it's a live show, the director can't talk to cameras. Uh, at CBS, the director talks to cameras and the associate director readies the shots. So basically, we tell them, they don't write down, they didn't write down the shots in those days. They listened to the AD, you know, two went off, get a wide shot of the stage. You know, uh, and, you'd, you'd, and they'd listen to us. But these guys, luckily, were so good that, and had nothing written down, that when they couldn't hear, they remembered their shots. So there wasn't a missed shot on the Beatles. Um, and they're basically simply shot anyway. There wasn't any really fancy kind of stuff there. So, um, so there, was a, there was a screaming, 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 and nobody heard a damn thing.